Welcome back to the 513 Podcast. I'm Nick Nickel, also known as Bengals Sporting. I'm alone today with no co-host. I'm here with a very special guest. Uh, undrafted free agent, second year player, Devin Cochran. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great, man. Glad to have you on the show. Glad to have you in orange and black. And, and yeah, man, just excited to see what you can do for Cincinnati this year. Absolutely. But uh, let's let's get started off the question. So uh first thing I wanna ask you is uh can you explain like you're an undrafted free agent uh last year, so can you explain the process and why you decided to choose Cincinnati that year? Sure. Um so as you know, initially I went undrafted. Um and so what that process kind of looks like is at the end of the draft you know, you might hear a couple things from some teams here and there, um, but you never get the call that you're actually drafted. So right at the end, which is, you know, kind of uncommonly known as the, you know, last round or eighth round, whatever you want to call it, um, undrafted guys kind of reach out to the teams that they were interested in. And um, I actually took a 30 trip to Cincinnati um, and was able to get in the building, get a feel for a lot of the coaches. Uh, talked to Coach Pollock. Uh, I saw Deontay Smith, who was uh, actually a roommate of mine when I played in the Elite Junior Classic um, in high school. So um, I immediately kind of knew somebody. I was able to, you know, kind of pick his brain and understand, um, you know, what 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 the program was like, what Cincinnati was like, you know, his experience. Um, and towards the end of the, the the draft process, my agents and I we all felt that uh, this was the best fit for me, um, a great place that I'd be able to develop. Um, Cincinnati is a great place as well. So, you know, I kind of walked around, just got a feel for the place. And, you know, I think it wasn't 15 minutes until the end of the draft. I was already about to call Cincinnati my home. So. Was there any other teams that were making an offer? Or was it mainly Cincinnati you were focusing on? Uh, yeah, we had a couple other offers. Um, I had also taken another 30 trip to um, Arizona and did – um, a credit in Atlanta. So I had other practice squad opportunities. Um, but I mean, the Bengals, as far as they are program wise, um, are one of the you know, most premier teams, organizations, clubs in the NFL. Um, so we, we knew that, you know, being able to get an opportunity to develop going against, you know, Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard and a lot of these guys, and just being on a really, really competitive team. Uh, would would help you know to get me a little bit of the edge that I needed to keep developing and, and prepare to be ready for the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's excited to have you. I mean, one thing that stands out is just your size, really. I mean, you're the tallest guy on the team. Is that right? I think so. Or like when I have stood next to each other, um, but I would say it depends on the day. Yeah, I mean. I mean, what's insane is just like I look at the roster, see you list at six foot seven. I actually have a twin brother that's the exact same height as you. So it's just seeing that is it's common for me, but it's just insane to see on the field. But uh, so next question I have is how has it been like being developed by Frank Pollock and what have you learned the most going from your rookie season into you two? Uh, man, I'll have to quote um, the chaplain. You know, he, he always talks to me about his experience as an un, undrafted free agent um, trying to get to the league. And he talks about, you know, the difference in your develop, bet development between your first year after the NFL uh, and then the following years. He says that first year that you kind of get access to those resources and access to, you know, things that you didn't have in college, whether that be. Georgia Tech or Vanderbilt, all of those things have allowed me to, what I feel is, um, make a lot of the developmental jumps that I really, really needed to make coming out of college. Um, you know, with Pollock, there were a lot of deficiencies that I came into, um, such as kind of not really having to play with good bend or, you know, not really um, being able to foot fire or fire my feet fast enough or have the lower body strength to really anchor a bull rush. There have been a ton of things that, you know, coming into – the NFL, I had an idea that I needed to work on, but I think the biggest thing has been learning all the things that I continue to need to work on. Um, and I would say the 
the, the funniest thing about the entire development is, and this is with um, Pollock, is I'm, I would say that I'm actually learning more this year in our meetings, our OTA practices, um, everything. You know, extra meetings I might go talk to uh, Coach Pollock or Coach Frazier for. I'm learning more this year than I did last year. And that's, you know, for me, I, I think it's resonating because I'm starting to finally get a good, um, a good kind of base of knowledge for the game. And I think that's one of the biggest things alignment should have. And so Pollock is really, really big on fundamentals, techniques, knowledge, really being able to regurgitate information at like extremely high proficiency. That's his biggest thing. So, you know, getting to learn, he, he calls our language Bengalese, you know, Getting to learn, you know, how the game is played, um, learn how Pollock especially thinks, and learn how some of the other some of my other teammates who have gotten to play, you know, Jackson or Jonah or you know Orlando, guys whose brains I can pick. It's just, it's been a really really good. Um, I don't want to say like a football workshop almost, but it felt similar to how it felt when I was at Vanderbilt. Uh, my first year red shirting and kind of getting my first feel for how fast practices are. How fast are these guys that I'm going against? What is true skill, you know, in the NFL look like? Because I played against good guys in college, but it's different, you know. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you said of like going from that first year to second year, just learning way well, you more. Know, I completely understand that because, like, that first year, just trying to understand what's going on the second you just slow down and and just uh like now you can just okay now i can work on myself i know what to do now i can just yeah so uh but moving back to your rookie season can you tell us about like how you think you performed in the preseason games and how like what you think you learned from those three games you had sure uh, I would say the first two games were definitely a great – I think they were a good showing to begin. Um, but before that, you know, we had a lot of time for acclimating. And so, you know, going into um, training camp, that was, I think, the first time that I realized I could actually, you know, kind of play with a lot of the guys that were on the field because I never really had um, – I could say confidence, but more, I would more so say – um, just a feeling for, you know, really fitting into the space that I'm in. I went to Georgia Tech. I went to Vanderbilt. You know, we won some games there. But a lot of these guys that I'm around, I was talking to uh, Jackson Carmen and, and Trey Hill yesterday. And uh, they were talking about being, you know, the number one, number two, you know, top five guards and tackles coming out of high school. You know, I, I came out, you know, 57, maybe 58. <clears throat> you know, so – the expectation for those guys has been there. You know, they were, oh yeah, these guys are top, top guys, draft guys. They can make, you know, this is this is for them. So, you know, obviously going undrafted, coming in, it's like, man, like, okay, I have a real chip on my shoulder. Um, and so I came in, you know, and I, and I took it by storm. I mean, it was live bullets, everything's coming fast. But um, luckily, I, I think because of, you know, switching from, tackle from side to side um, at Vanderbilt and Georgia Tech, as well as, you know, playing against different conferences as well as uh, different schemes, I kind of got a good fit and a good, uh, a good you know, level of understanding to, 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 to be on the field and be successful in this year. So, so I'm wondering, uh, like, okay, I'm, I'm losing it right now, but... Uh... <laughs> So, just just give me a sec. I'm like losing everything I just thought of for a minute. No problem. Uh, I'll probably remember. Let's just, I'll just move on to the next question. Uh, so, what are your goals you have for this season? Like last year, you made it to the practice squad after posting good performances in preseason. What is your like trying to make that next step, or what are you looking to do this season? Yeah. Um, well, I have individual goals for, you know, obviously on field stuff. I would say my great, the biggest goal that I have for football is I, I want to be on a 53 man roster. Um, so, you know, every single day, you know, I take the steps in my head 
um, that would hit me there. Um, I always kind of felt like when I would work out with other people that if I'm not doing at the very least, you know, more, you know, than the standard, then I'm getting worse than everybody else. Because in the NFL, I feel like everybody is constantly improving. You know, I'm looking at guys, you know, they're coming back from their first years. We all look bigger. We all look, you know, we're all moving faster. We're all smarter. We're all, you know, stronger. Um, so, you know, OTAs for me, once I got back this year, has been just to stack chips, right? So just every day I'm focusing on, you know, minute things or whatever it is that day that can get me better. So in the grand scheme of things, I'm trying to get better every single day, whether that might be, you know, my recovery, it could be on the field performance, it could be in the classroom, it could be in an extra meeting with the coach. It could be, you know, if I got in the sauna long enough, if I did my cold tub, if I did, you know, every single aspect, you know, if, it, if it's not getting better, uh, I feel like I'm either getting worse or staying stagnant and the league's going to just move on because this is a very, very fast and aggressive game. Um, it's a fast lifestyle. Guys come and go. And I don't want to be one of those guys, you know, who's just in and out. I want to be somebody who can, you know, start at the bottom or start wherever it is that I need to start and prove and show and earn the respect from not only, you know, coaches, but the guys around me that know, hey, this guy is serious. This guy works his tail off. Yeah, man, I'm completely, I completely understand that. So something about, like, getting better and just, trying to learn everything. I've been an offensive lineman, a veteran that has really given you a lot to learn about. It just, just has a, say, just like put him under your wing, I'd say. Repeat that, that last part. Like someone, like a veteran offensive tackle with God, really, that just developed you and has taught you the most and really just Oh, yeah. Put you under his weight, I'd say. Yeah. You want to know examples? Yeah. Like gotcha. any sure. names sure. that you can think of? Yeah, for sure. Too many to count, man. Um, I would say to begin, um, when we first got here, Lyle uh, was actually, you know, really pouring into me a lot and helping me with just kind of the basic, um, I think, tackle techniques and just ta things that he saw after his, you know, veteran career that um, resonated with him because – um, he's played the game a long time. He's seen a lot of different tackles. So he's always kind of helped me as far as, you know, tackle game. But somebody who um, kind of, I'd say, unexpectedly has helped me um, develop two guys in particular, I'd say, actually are um, probably Alex Kaplan and Ted Karras. So, for example, with Alex, during the uh, season last year, when Jackson made the switch to tackle, I actually played a lot of guard. So I was moving at practice squad, you know, guard to guard, going against DJ, BJ. Zach, Josh, you know, all those guys. And so to be completely honest with you, I'd never played guard before, you know, so it was hard for me to understand, you know, am I doing this right? Am I getting better? You know, what does that look like? So I had to watch Capo a lot because, you know, of all the guys on the team that I kind of watched, uh, I, I, I remember training camp. You know, Kappa did some things where I was – like he upkicked Aaron Donald. And that video – I mean, I don't know you probably, I don't know if you've seen it, but he did a really, 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 really difficult move against one of the best people in the game. To have the confidence to do something like that means that as a, as a guard, you know, he's, he's, he's good. He's comfortable. And so I, I picked his brain a lot. Uh, talked to him about kind of his – out of season transition. What does he do? How does he, per, you know, how does he practice? What does his training regiment look like? And then uh, Max Sharping. Max Sharping is one of the guys who helped me just get in to help do combination blocks. I mean, a lot of times, you know, some guys might not be stepping in to go. Max will look at me and call me and allow me to just go with him, whether that would be when I was on practice squad or this year, you know, and then Max helps me and tackle, guard, both sides. And then, off the field, Max was, I mean, he was so helpful because we do, we have our own um, Jeopardy games. And it's hard to pick up, you know, NFL schemes and, and just play design and concepts. And it's really, really difficult when you're trying to learn them 
watching them from the defensive side when you're giving the look. So just that aspect of the game was, you know, different because I'm, I'm trying to learn plays watching them in front of me instead of, you know, walking through because I have a purpose, right? I'm on practice squad. I have to serve my teammates. That's what I'm doing. I'm developing and I'm also giving looks. But so we'll have, you know, meetings on the weekends before games where we have to, we're tested on our knowledge. And I found out real quick that, you know, it's very complicated and it's very difficult to, to, to grasp, even if you are playing. So, you know, going to Max every single morning, um, days before our meetings, he would essentially help, you know, teach me the looks. Okay, hey, here's an Abbey front. Here's um, a different, you know, guard comment. This might be a different zone, a different way to block this. We might have a different zone call. It might have a different protection or we might have a check out of it or alert or something. And Max always was very, very helpful. Um, so as the year kind of progressed, I really picked up on the Jeopardy game. It was really good. Yeah, I mean, Max, Catholic, yes, that was a great answer. And now that just made me think of a new question. I didn't know you transitioned to guard last year. So now I'm wondering, are you like trying to play off as a tackle this year or is it guard? And if so, what side? Yeah. Um, the, the biggest thing that I've learned about um, my position so far, and I'll, I'll call offensive line, is that I there's no I don't have a true position, right? That I can work for. I have to be knowledgeable on essentially all five positions. Now I'm six eight. I might not I've never get to play center, but knowing points and IDs as well as center slides and calls is very very helpful. And I think being able to play a little bit of guard in the practice squad um, last year helped me to conceptualize just the entirety of, of the line and how all the moving parts kind of work together. So I wouldn't say I'm working towards playing guard. I play tackle right now. Um, as far as going back to back, I do a lot of tackle. But, you know, when we have options or opportunities to, you know, learn footwork for guard or, you know, work combo blocks at guard, I'll try my best to get in as, you know, as I'm needed or as I can possibly get in. So. I want to know every single aspect of the game. If I could play, you know, blocking tight end, I would do that as well. Okay. I mean, if you want to be the who is that offensive tackle for the Raiders and Bucks that just caught like twenty touchdowns? I mean, it could be like him, but uh, that's a life. So that's every offensive lineman's dream. Yeah, just every practice. Oh, who we don't need mix and give me the ball, just. Right up the A gap. I'll get 50. Uh, they might not feel too good about that. Yeah. All right. So uh, last question I have to ask, and I ask this to every player. What is your record in pain fun after my interview with Brad Robbins? I think I've included this as well. Cornhole. What, how have you done compared to the locker room? In Mexico? I know it's very aggressive. Man. So funny story. I actually hadn't played ping pong for the first time until um, my graduate transfer year at uh, Georgia Tech. We actually went to uh, one of my teammates' lake house and had a, some pretty competitive, some competitive games um, where I got, I thought, I thought I got a little good, but I got humbled uh, pretty, pretty fast um, at Georgia Tech in my games at the, the, um, Lake House, as well as when we got back to the, the stadium. So I, I try to keep, I try to stay off the ping pong table as much because, you know, those those games get a little they get a little heated. And you know, I've seen guys two and a half hours after, you know, practice is over, still in their practice like jerseys and practice pants, still playing two and a half hours later. You know, so oh wow, I mean, the guys are getting in like that. That's about cornhole anything with that or just stay off everything not even cornhole um you know you'll find me in the kind of in that little corner with the rookies you know we uh me and ben brown and, and nate we we have our uh, nate gilliam and uh, tanner hudson we, we have our own little kind of corner of uh of stuff. So if you're ever in there, you can, don't be afraid to come to the back. Come right in the back and go left. You'll see us back there. You can come, you know, get some words. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, 
a lot of comedic relief going on back there. All right. I mean, I just ask. Now I'm wondering because, like, I'm scared whenever I ask that cornhole and ping pong con question because, like, Brad Robbins said he got cooked like 21 to three against Trenton, and then everyone's saying, "Oh yeah, I don't want to touch that thing. It's so aggressive." It's but yeah, I understand that. I've, I've actually but, uh, I've seen some guys play. I've seen some guys in that locker room do some pretty pretty crazy stuff. Jackson Carmen is really really good. Trey Hill's really really good. Um, I think I saw saw I might have seen Trent Irwin. I might, I don't know who I saw in it, but I saw some guys doing some stuff. I don't think I could have competed with. So I know my I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm bad at. You know, and I kind of all um, right. But yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for coming on, Devin, and thank you for listening to the 513 Podcast. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to watch this. Devin hopefully makes the 53-man roster, whether it's tackle, guard, blocking tight end, catching tight end, back even punter. We don't know yet, but let's see. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you.